Well, hey, everyone, welcome back to the Dr. Jocker's Functional Nutrition Podcast, where we really look at food, air, water, the things that we're inputting into our body as biological information that tells our genetics how to express themselves. We can express optimal health by clean, by really bringing in clean food, clean air, clean water. And so I've got a great guest today. This is Kyle Knappenberger. Hopefully I said that right. <laughs> He's the Director of Applications at Timlin Technology Acquisitions in Bonita Springs, Florida. Kyle holds a Bachelor's of Science degree in Microbiology from Kansas State University. He earned his degree while researching and testing water purification techniques. For over a decade, Kyle has been working on using safe metal oxide technology for odor control and toxic chemical neutralization applications. Kyle joined a company, Timlin, in 2013 when they acquired the technology behind Fast Act, which is trademarked, and Odor Cleanse, which I'll have to ask you about those. I'm interested in that. From the company where he previously held a variety of leadership positions, Kyle co holds six patents related to the mitigation of chemical and biological contamination. So Kyle's really an expert when it comes to uh, being able to clean up our air. And so we're going to talk about how important that is. So Kyle, welcome to the podcast. Oh, thank you. I'm very pleased to join. Absolutely. So obviously you've got you've been working on this for quite a while, really looking at chemicals, how they affect our water, how they affect our air. So what are some of the major chemicals that people are breathing in on a, on a daily basis? Well, uh, you are correct in that I've been doing this for, for quite a while. I kind of almost need to update some of my bio. It's now going on over two decades uh, uh, involved in this technology. And, and you mentioned it, it started with, with water purification um, and looking at different contaminants, trying to help you know, with the drinking water. I know I'm kind of going off topic a little bit, but I kind of wanted to set the stage for, for, for your question there. Um, you know, we've been been doing a lot of different things, uh, removing chemicals and pollution. And, and you mentioned some of our our brand names, Fast Act, EnviroCleanse, Odor Cleanse. All of these products are utilizing an earth mineral technology to break down harmful chemicals in different mm. things, whether that's for first responders that are encountering toxic chemicals from a release, whether accidental or, or um, you know, intentional. Um, or chemicals that are in our air that we're breathing, which is the question you know that you you just specifically asked. Uh, and you know, I mean, everything is made of a chemical. Uh, I mean, the oxygen we breathe, the nitrogen we breathe, are chemicals. The you know, it really comes down to what are the harmful things that yeah. are intermixed in with all those things that that um, you know we are taking into our body. You know, we have to eat, we have to drink, we have to breathe really to uh, you know obviously to survive and we encounter a lot of different things on on any given day uh, in 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 water uh, you know we have things like uh, particulate matter you know physical debris uh, our water systems do a pretty good job of course of removing a lot of that kind of stuff the sediment and and things like that uh, but then there's the chemicals because uh, you know they're intermixed with the water uh, we have chlorinated compounds, fluorinated compounds. I mean, the, a lot of these things are used, obviously, to treat and remove much more harmful things. Yeah. But we still have those things. We've got the ammonia. We've got the pesticides that all make their way into our waterway. And again, some of those are there because we're removing other things. And it's kind of you have to make a choice between, you know, treated water so that we can... Uh, yeah, you, you kind know, of have our, to pick your poison, right? <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, yes. Uh, but a lot of those things do make their ways into our waterways. And a lot of what we have to deal with in, in water, of course, is is also organic matter, bacteria, rust, yeah. um, things that are just kind of in our water system. But it, it is those chemicals that we're bringing into our body, um, you know, drinking them or through air that are, are you know, quite problematic, and they can build up in a pe in, a, in a person, and and they can, um, you know, depending upon a, an individual's sensitivities to things, they may just not be able to handle that as well as with as well as someone else. And for for air quality, you know, if you're sitting in an indoor environment. I'm sitting in an indoor environment, and obviously, we have outdoor pollution that can come into our homes, uh, and that's. You know all the different things of society that that we can be breathing, but 
you know, looking around, you know, I've got wood, uh, you know, we've got carpets, we've got building materials, all these different things are contributing to indoor air pollution. And, um, you know, it's not, you know, a surprising thing that indoor air pollution is higher than, than, um, you know, outdoor air pollution is because obviously our indoor air is made up of what's outside and, and all the things that we're essentially trapping into our homes. And yeah, I think the EPA says indoor air is two to five times more toxic than outdoor air, right? Yeah, that that's, you know, a, one of the, you know, that, that, that's a, you know, well, um, uh, publicized number. A lot of people uh, see that and report that. And, and it, and part of that has to do with we're trying to build more energy efficient homes by not letting our cooled air leak or, or, or heated air. I'm, I'm actually, you mentioned our companies in Bonita Springs, Florida. I'm in Kansas. That's where our, our technology mm. center is. So, you know, right now my house is trapping the uh, heated air because it's only, you know, 30 something degrees outside. Mm. Uh, but that energy efficiency is, is trapping in that our pollution. Uh, we've got, um, you know, things like uh, different uh, uh, volatile organic compounds, uh, you know, the VOC categories, because uh, a lot of our building materials have adhesives or chemical treatments or flame retardants yeah. that, um, again, we, we need them to, you know, so our house doesn't burn down and all these different sorts of things. And we need them so that, you know, we can maintain some energy efficiency in our home and things to look nice. But these are the things that we're breathing. And, um, you know, that we, we can't, we can make a lot of choices. Uh, you know, you, you talk about making good choices about what you eat and drink and, but it's hard for us as, as individuals to make choices about the air we breathe. Mm. You know, you can, <clears throat> you can move to different places, but you, you're still at the mercy of the air quality of where you are. Yeah, absolutely. Very, very true on that. And do a lot of these chemicals off gas? Cause I've heard, one, one big risk factor, because all these chemicals have carcinogenic properties and things like that. Um, and a big risk factor that I've heard is when you move into new houses or new cars and you're getting a larger amount of chemicals that you're being exposed to, you know, like with new paints, new furniture, things like that. So let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah, a absolutely. Um, obviously, the, the closer to the the construction, I guess you could say, or the the, the production or uh, the off-gassing rate is going to be higher. There's actually been a lot of different studies done on, on different paints and, and surface, uh, surface materials that uh, talk about, you know, uh, what is coming off of these things. And of course it does dissipate, dissipate over time, but, you know, formaldehyde is a very common um, mm. compound. And, and, you know, it's the type of thing that in, mm. in, you know, for the general population, it, it may take, you know, pretty high concentrations in terms of micrograms per cubic meters for, you know, the average person to, to, to notice it or have, um, you know, symptoms from that. But as you start getting into individuals that um, are much more sensitive or have immune immunodeficiencies and those sorts of things, the concentrations that it takes, you know, can start to be significantly lower, you know, in just, you know, the 10 or, or, or less micrograms per, per, per cubic meter, and they, they start to have uh, problems. Uh, one thing that our company, we hear about a lot is actually um, when people are building or renovating or moving into new homes, they have a lot of issues with the paint off-gassing. Uh, there's uh, a lot of, again, solvents in paint. Now they're they're in the paint to help cure and essentially dry the paint quickly and efficiently. So there there kind of is an interesting give and take on that. Um, you know, there's a lot of lower VOC paints. Some of the things that we've heard about from customers, uh, and it, it kind of makes sense when you really start to think about it, is if you're removing the solvents that off gas rapidly that help cure a paint from a paint and go with water-based types of paints, they take longer to cure because the thing that helps dry them fast isn't there. So it is a bit of a, you know, a, a balancing act in, in terms of, you know, what do you want the composition of that, you know, material on 
going up on your wall to be? Do you want it to rapidly off gas over a short period of time and cure fast? Or do you just not want the exposure to those chemicals at all? And you're willing to take the, the slower off gassing and, and even low and no VOC paints mm -hmm. still often will have them because of the thresholds that are allowed. But interestingly, a lot of times that, that that claim on that label for low or no VOC applies to the base paint, uh, mm -hmm. but people don't typically buy the base paint. They're they're tinting it. They're putting colors and things like that into it, which contain those chemicals. Um, you know, just kind of complicating complicating those matters. Um, you know, flooring uh, often will have uh, a wide variety of you know engineered flooring has a lot of different adhesives uh, uh, in it. Uh, again, and these are organic based compounds. They fall, you know, they fall under that general VOC indoor air quality uh, category uh, and they do off gas. And, you know, it, I just feel bad for a lot of people that reach out to us about air quality and, and they may have purchased this home several months ago and they're still dealing with, um, issues from 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 the building itself uh, the, the, those volatile organic compounds and uh, the adhesives and the cocks and and the sealants and again sometimes you might put a sealant over paint or something that you've done in order to try to trap it in there but that thing needs to yeah. still here and you still have have the challenge that is is, is um a, a result of the the problem of again the choices that we make to put yeah but in our home. So uh, it really kind of does come down to a lot of different things. Um, and then depending upon where you live, I just actually the other day was, was talking to um, a lady who was making some decisions on air quality in, in her home. And one of her biggest concerns was she lives in a, a community that has maintains their property well. Well, part of that is of course, pesticide treatment. And they're spraying all sorts of pesticides on the trees and the and the and the on the landscaping, and that that was her biggest concern was that intrusion of the pesticides into her into her home. So I, I kind of touched on a lot of things there. If there's anything else you want to, uh, yeah, there's there's obviously so many chemicals that we're we're dealing with, and so you get more of the industrial chemicals. Uh, early on in the early in the life the the lifespan of the house, or if you do renovations, but then as you're living in the house, you've also got things like dust mites, allergens, things like that that you're bringing in, possibly mold if there's um, water damage and things like that, and so those can all have negative effects as well. So what do you see as like somebody's living in a house that's aging? Well, you you actually hit a, a lot on uh, those kind of all fall into a lot of the them fall into the category of kind of particulate matter, the dust mm -hmm. allergens, dust mites, the different uh, decay, broken down uh, biological pollutant types of things. Um, they they absolutely uh, are, and, and really indoor air quality is a combination of of a lot of different things. Uh, it's it's the chemicals, it's the particulate matter. Uh, it's it's the, the you know the biological types of things that are in your home. It can be uh, the decay and the breakdown of of older, uh, as you mentioned, uh, building components. You know, older homes may have things. Uh, again, it falls into the particulate matter uh, side of things. It, you know, the the asbestos issues mm. and yep. and uh, those small small particulates uh, that that can be found. You know, in a home, and then there's uh, Older homes, have, you know, if you move into an older home, you may, may, may frankly be moving into a home in which the previous owners had uh, smoked in. And that particulate matter, this, you know, again, the yeah. two to five <laughs> micron uh, cigarette smoke uh, particles may, may be in the home. So there, there's quite a few different things. And again, you know, I, you know, we have to make choices on, on what we, on what we bring into our home, but you can't always yeah. eliminate these things. And, you know, we can't control uh, every aspect of it. Um, but that's where just making smart decisions and understanding the sources of, of the sources of them uh, as we 
move into the home. So. Yeah, I think it's something we all need to be aware of because we can't we can't really physically see it. I mean, sometimes you can. You can see black mold or something like that. But for the most part, you're not actually going to see this. In fact, a lot of people actually enjoy the smell of like, like a new sofa or something like that. <laughs> um, but for the most part, we're not actually noticing differences in odor usually. <clears throat> we're, not, we're not seeing it, but we're being exposed to it all the time. And so over time, it can build up. You know, I always tell people about the toxic bucket theory. It's like we all have this bucket and we're putting toxins into it every day. Some people have more pores in the bucket and they're able to drain and detox better than others. Mm -hmm. And then the, the chronically ill people are people that have those pores are blocked up. And so they're not able to detox well. And now the bucket starts filling up because they're breathing these things in, drinking them, eating them. And then all of a sudden it starts spilling over and they have these chronic symptoms and chronic issues. And so, you know, it's always one of those things when you're dealing with chronic issues <clears throat> and you've tried lifestyle change and you just really didn't see improvement. You know, a lot of people will just change their diet, start exercising, improve their sleep, and they see significant changes. Other people don't. And when you don't, you really need to start looking at all your sources of toxins and obviously air is a really big factor here. So what are, what are some things people can do to clean up their indoor air? Well, there's uh, the, the choices we make is, 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 is a pretty good one. Uh, obviously, if we're making decisions on what we're bringing into our home, let's bring things into our home that ideally A, don't contribute negatively to um, air pollution, you know, getting um, carpets that, you know, are you know, better, more sustainable, you know, that don't have a lot of the uh, backings or um, chemical uh, treatments to them. Uh, again, uh, a lot of people do make choices on, you know, more natural hardwood floors versus yeah. an engineered. So if you're building uh, a home, if you're building a home and you're able to do it, hard, natural hardwood wood floors would have a lot less chemicals than carpets typically. Uh, Carpet, well, potentially, yes. I mean, you have to put carpet over something. So, uh, yeah. you no, know, you obviously don't want to put carpet over, you know, uh, you know, like concrete slab or something like that, where it can trap moisture and then cause other issues, um, you know, mold problems, those sorts of things. Mm. So it, it's not just that it is making good choices, but it's also, you know, doing things and building things correctly. Um, you know, if you put nice, good quality natural flooring down, but then you put horrible stains on there that have, you know, I mean, that, that could be a negative contribution. Um, but making sure that you, you know, are, are cleaning and vacuuming and removing that, you know, physical debris, you know, that's one way to help remove that stuff. But then obviously there's things related to air purification, um, having a good quality um, air filter in your home's uh, central air system, um, you know, higher MERV rated, MERV rated filters can reduce, uh, remove, I guess you'd say smaller and smaller particles uh, more efficiently. So you can capture the different um, uh, allergens, dust mite, dust dander, uh, things like that. Uh, utilizing uh, air purifiers like our EnviroCleanse air purifier is, mm -hmm. is, is, is a, a way to help your air quality because uh, it is using two-stage filtration both against particulates and chemicals to capture and retain and break down uh, recirculating uh, chemical pollutants. And, and one thing that often a lot of air filters uh, in particular, or even air purifier devices, they, they're often um, addressing just the particulate matter. I mean, HEPA filtration is a great way to remove a lot of small, small particulates. Well, what does that mean, HEPA filtration? Uh, it's a high efficiency, uh, uh, particulate. Um, it, it, essentially, the the statistic or the rating on it is uh, the removal of of uh, particles 0.3 microns and larger. Mm -hmm. So that encompasses a lot of the the, the key uh, particulate matter that would be in our homes on a, on a daily basis. You know, the small dust, uh, the you know, a lot of the biological organisms, mold spores, those things that might be in the air can be captured by, by a HEPA filter. Um, but a lot of the chemicals, odors, and gases can go right through even a HEPA filter because, you know, I mean, now we're talking about the things that are in the air that we can smell. Um, 
though, those are smaller than 0.3 microns. Uh, they can often latch themselves to particles and things like that. But if it's just the gas or just the odor, or just the vapor, uh, it's going to go through through even a HEPA filter. That's where you need a technology that can um, attack and interact with chemicals. And uh, that's where, you know, you mentioned our fast act odor cleanse and viral cleanse brands. Yeah. That's using, that's our technology, these earth mineral materials, high surface area metal oxides to actually chemically interact with different chemistries. And, and we like to attack the different functional groups. So as you're, for example, yeah. using air purifier in a home, it's recirculating the air in your, in your house uh, or potentially uh, like in your HVAC system because we have HVAC air filters as well. Uh, as the air is re recirculating and it comes into contact with our material, it can grab onto that, chemically break it down and retain it. So if you had, I don't know if they, they're not going to be spraying pesticides in, in my neighborhood today, but if they were outside spraying pesticides and it came into my environment, it's going to be in the air. You know, you can smell that, but if you can circulate the air, remove it, chemically break it down and retain it, you're, you're then now removing it from, from your, from your indoor air. And that's what we want to do. We want to remove those types of pollutants that can be dangerous, you know? So the earth mineral technology actually breaks down <clears throat> the toxin. Yes. And then, yeah. and then the filter holds onto it. What is the earth mineral technology? Is that like, I know, um, you know, I use a lot of fulvic acids and humic acids that come from the earth for detoxification of the body. Is it somewhat similar to that? Well, ours are, uh, you know, being uh, not, not exactly the same chemistry. Um, hmm. The ones that we tend to use are like magnesium oxide and, and zinc oxide uh, in our materials. And, and they're essentially, they are, you know, these are things that occur naturally. People mine them out of yeah. the ground. Uh, magnesium oxide, you know, if you think of like yeah. milk magnesia or, yeah. or it's like or, a laxative, yeah, uh, yeah, things that can help settle the you know your uh, stomach acids and these things that the uh, metal oxides do that sort of thing. But what we're able to do is kind of change them in a way structurally and physically that takes better advantage of these properties that they inherently have. Uh, metal oxides can break down a lot of different things, but they're typically not very efficient at doing it because they're like these, essentially these materials where the bulk of the atoms are locked inside, you know, just imagine a solid piece of mass, you know, whether it's a, a cube or a sphere, most of it is inside. Well, the way we can do it is we can actually greatly enhance the surface area. And kind of an analogy I often share with people is, you know, imagine just a popcorn kernel. You know, it's a tightly dense uh, material. Well, if you can engineer it correctly and pop it, it's the same material. It's actually bigger. Uh, but you've now exposed more of that stuff that was locked inside to give it more surface area so that it can interact with things. And... That's essentially what we do with our magnesium oxide, zinc oxide, and uh, different uh, mm -hmm. uh, metal oxides that we make is just take advantage of what's already kind of locked inside of them so that they can be used to their full potential. And we like to do that because you need chemical interaction often to react with chemicals, odors, and mm -hmm. paper. You know, you don't want it to be a sponge. You don't want to just bring it in and then it could be wrung out or anything like that. You you want to chemically interact with it so that you can effectively remove it from. So is the from like the is the magnesium oxide acting as a pro oxidant in a sense, creating like oxidative stress around the particulate? Uh, it's it's different than that. Um, hmm. In in that. Um, we, our magnesium oxide, for example, it has a lot of surface hydroxyls, and it's going to want to attack different chemical functional groups. You know, it can work against, you know, things that are acidic through maybe a more traditional acid-base reaction. Mm. But it's going to work against other chemistries, maybe like a pesticide by attacking, you know, phosphorus nitri or nitrogen mm. uh, materials. So it's, it's not a singular chemical mechanism okay. it's it's actually that one of its nice advantages is that it can work in different ways mm. depending upon what the chemical is yeah, yeah it's we, we we tend to call it you know a broad spectrum uh, because of mm. these different you know chemical mechanisms 
Yeah, that's really fascinating. What are your thoughts on plants? A lot of people like to put plants in their house. How does that help improve indoor air quality? Well, it, it does work because, um, you know, uh, one of the things that a lot of people do monitor, of course, is, you know, carbon carbon dioxide, and that's plants are going to be able to use, you know, that and, and flip it around to make it more useful for you. But there are a lot of different uh, plants, and I think it's particularly like the ferns group that are, are good at, I mean, they're breathing in, I mean, they're, they're essentially breathing in and taking in the air just like we do. Mm-hmm. Well, you mentioned, you know, the human body's bio burden, you know. Yeah we might not be able to absorb those things or maybe some of us can to some degree. Well, the plants are doing the same thing. They're just bringing them into them, whether or not they're using them uh, successfully or it's putting stress on them is, you know, maybe a question for, for a different expert, but, but that's what they're doing is they're, they're taking these things in and they're removing them uh, from our airspace. It may not be as efficient or, or as fast as, um, other methods of, you know, like mechanical filtration like we do, or, uh, you know, even uh, air exchange with the outside is is helpful for our indoor environment. But yeah, plants absolutely can be, um, you know, very helpful, um, or at least helpful, maybe not very, but they are, they can be helpful. How about vacuuming your house? Does that help improve your indoor air quality? Yeah, it can, uh, because Mm -hmm. if you have a good quality vacuum that can capture um, the smaller particulates, I mean, you know, you're, as you vacuum, people see their, their, their dust collection system pick up stuff that is removing particulates, you know, from the air. The one thing you obviously want to make sure is that that's cleaned and maintained so that you're not just blowing that stuff right back into the, right. You know, uh, there, there have been some interesting uh, studies and and I can see how this can actually work. Um, You know, if you have carpet in a home, the carpet does act as a bit of a, a filter for your house, mm-hmm. you know, it's collecting stuff. It's not kicking it up into the air. So there is something that can be possibly said as, as you know, it might be better to have that left in the carpet than vacuuming it with a, mm-hmm. a bad vacuum that just throws it back into the air uh, to where you're breathing it. But no, absolutely vacuuming with a good quality vacuuming, removing that particulate uh, from the, from the air does is, is helpful. Um, for, for our environments, you know, you just don't yeah. want that stuff lingering in the air, but, but carpets again, can, they have both sides of the equation. You know, if it's a poor carpet with a lot of chemicals that are off gassing, you really don't want that. But if you have a good quality carpet, natural fibers, and it can kind of keep things settled until you do a quality vacuuming, uh, it can be helpful. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, I always find that when the house is cleaned, right? It just seems like the air is cleaner. You know, you just kind of have that feel about it. So uh, it's always made a difference for me. Um, so we've talked about a couple of things, you know, obviously keeping our house clean, possibly putting plants in the house, um, trying to use like lower VOC versions of, you know, any sort of industrial products that we might be using. Well, and um, even, even our, 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 you know, day-to-day use products, you know, yeah. our clean solvents and uh, yeah. personal care products, mm. Uh, they often contain a lot of um, materials that if you make better choices, yeah. you know, uh, you know, there's solvents in disinfectants, cosmetics, mm-hmm. degreasers, hobby products, yeah. waxes, you, you know, you name it. There's a lot of different things that, you know, we can make better choices on. Yeah, you want to use natural products as natural as possible uh, that you can find so you're exposed to less of those chemicals. I remember years ago, before I knew anything about this, cleaning uh, my bathroom and spraying Windex, right? And it would just like <laughs> hit the mirror and like spray back at me. And I always felt so fatigued after I would clean my bathroom. And I could realize why my body was trying to recover from the uh, onslaught of toxicity that I just put myself through. So yeah, so making good choices with those things. How about essential oils? Or are you familiar with like, because I know we diffuse some essential oils uh, have you ever looked at that, like diffusing essential oils that have any sort of impact on our indoor air quality that you know of? I am not uh, as well versed on on yeah. that type of chemistry. I mean, yeah. it, it's it's a category that encompasses a lot of different uh, a lot of different things, and uh, I would not probably be the one to to add a lot of knowledge on that. The, mm-hmm. the one thing though that I often you know do like to stress when it comes to air quality is I always like to attack the problem. If the problem is things in the air, 
Yeah. I would rather work on a solution that is removing things from the yeah. Earth. Yeah. Uh, versus, versus adding to it. Now, I know that, you know, a lot of folks do like essential oils and that they have other benefits uh, for that individual. You know, that's great. Uh, but just from a strictly what's in the air and, and I want to remove things, I don't want to be adding things. Yeah. And that, that's just kind of how I like to approach it. Yeah. And so let's talk about a little bit more about air purification, because I have the EnviroCleanse, which uh, uses the technology you were talking about. My house, I have, so I have a bunch actually in my home. Um, we have it in near all of our kids' uh, rooms. Obviously, children are more even more at risk, right? Because their detoxification yeah. systems are not fully developed and they're, they're smaller, you know, and so. Yeah, a lot less mass in their bodies. The yeah. They're breathing in, you know, roughly the same as we are, the same things that we're breathing. They just have a lot less that can, you know, essentially absorb it or take it on. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So let's talk about the difference between the EnviroCleanse filter and your typical air purifiers that are out there. Oh, sure. Well, uh, I kind of uh, touched on this a little bit mm -hmm. earlier is, you know, air quality has a lot of different things. Uh, in it. We've got the particulate matter, we've got the chemicals, odors, vapors, fragrances, whatever, whatever it happens to be in the air. And we want to make sure that we can address the different things that, you know, different things with, with one technology. And, and a lot of the purifiers out there are pretty focused solely on the particulate angle. Um, they're, they're using HEPA filters. Some, some use even uh, filters that can get even smaller particulates, uh, you know, that might be applicable to some folks, but for the most part, most of them use HEPA filtration because HEPA filtration is going to encompass what we really need it to do on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, some of these other air purifiers or, or air purifiers on the market will then use, in order to try to address the chemicals in the air, they'll often utilize carbons or carbons that have other materials put on them. And that kind of works to a degree, but it works kind of more like a sponge. It can fill up the pores of the carbon media, but we've seen in studies and, and we've done these even in our lab, slight elevations in temperature can cause that stuff to come right off. Mm. Uh, even uh, inching it from, you know, 74 degrees to 78 degrees uh, Fahrenheit in, in a, in a environment is it can be enough to drive things off of, of, wow. uh, of, uh, you know, like a carbon filter in. Again, I mentioned I live in Kansas today wouldn't be the issue. You know, my home is probably in the low seventies right now, but, in the summer here, you know, we're going to struggle, you know, at times to keep it cool and comfortable. You know, we can easily hit a hundred degrees and, you know, that would be enough, you know, outside to help or to, to cause off gassing from, from some carbon medias. And there are other devices out there that utilize um, different technologies. Sometimes they have, have, have low doses of ozone or, uh, put ions or, or or different things that they're putting out into the environment, trying to either aggregate or react with chemistry. And it, it still kind of comes back to what I said just a few moments ago is if, if the goal here is let's remove pollutants from our air and what we're breathing, let's not put something out into the environment. Let's yeah. not try to react with that chemical floating in, you know, in our, in our enclosed airspace. Let's bring it to the technology. Let's recirculate that air. Let's capture it. Let's retain it. Let's break it down. Um, you know, ozone is 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 the type of thing that we get asked about quite a bit. And you know, I mean, it is an you know, it's an oxidizing process. But what is it breaking down that chemical molecule to? Is it just bits and pieces of other things? Well, it, those other things maybe aren't as dangerous, but they're still out there. Uh, they may, may still be in your environment. Do you really want to be breathing that in or would you rather just take that chemical, bind it up and mm. have it not be in your environment? And that, that's kind of where we go. Yeah. Uh, and that's kind of when we, when we talk to folks, is, that's really how we, we really want to think about that um, is let's, let's make a positive impact by removing things. Yeah. Uh, 
and you use the earth mineral technology and then also you have ultraviolet as well right that helps kind uh, one, of one of our systems does have the yeah, them, the, yeah. the uv in it and what that does is um you're obviously collecting things on the the hepa mm -hmm. filter and and some of the things that you're collecting uh, are going to be retained on the hepa filter and the the the, the uv lights um offer uh, it's a specific band of 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 light radiation, the UVC band that has germicidal uh, mm -hmm. benefits. Um, so, of course, what you've collected then gets exposure to to that. So, it's it's just kind of an added feature in in one of our models. Now, both of the the models that we actually offer are removing the exact same particulates, chemicals, odors, vapors from the environment. So, you're removing all the same sorts of things with with both systems. There's just the added uh, mm. uh, exposure with the UVC, and and some folks really do like to have that uh, added benefit. Yep. And so you put one of these in your home, and um, how long typically does a cartridge last before you should change it out? Our system uh, does have two stages of filtration. It's got the HEPA filter and the the chemical odor uh, cartridge, and and generally they're gonna, it's going to you know the scientist in me is going to qualify everything because it's going to technically vary based off of yeah. uh, the use, the cubic space you're using, the level of contaminants that may be coming into your home. Uh, but generally speaking, they're going to last in that three to six month range mm -hmm. um, of continual uh, use type of situations for the EnviroCleanse cartridge. The HEPA filter, again, it's going to depend upon how much physical matter gets collected over the course of time. But we've had uh, customers who live in heavily polluted areas that are just capturing a lot of particulates and they're, they're changing them out more frequently, maybe six to nine months or a year. We've had other customers who, who are using it more just to reduce what I would call or, or maintain odors in their homes that, that are letting that go and they're, they're changing it every few years. So uh, it really, again, again does vary depending upon how much pollution yeah. is coming into the home but you'll, you'll to answer your question much more as a marketer i would say every six months on one and every couple of years on the other so on the hepa usually every one to two years yeah and then for the earth mineral technology that one um you're looking at more like every six months like you said yep, yep. Exactly. okay so that's that's good Yep. And so guys, for those of you guys out there, uh, this is, this is the air purifier that I use in my house. And, um, you know, if you can only get one, cause, uh, you know, obviously it is an investment. If you can only get one, I always recommend people put it in that the living space where you're spending the most time. Um, but obviously if you can get several kind of put them up in, in different areas, you know, certainly like where you're sleeping, things like that, it's going to give you the best benefit. Would you agree? That you you actually just said what I often say to folks that I'm working with is um, put it where you're living and and yeah. it often you know I remind people that you spend most of your time in your bedroom you know a lot of that is sleeping you know that's a good you know, depending upon how long you sleep but you know there's six to nine hours yeah. every given day mm -hmm. uh, I know that's where I spend most of my time you know between work and kids activities you know you're rarely home when you're home you get home you eat dinner, do your, your family chores and go to bed. So, um, it, absolutely the bedroom and then the, the main, main living areas are, are, are the key, key areas you would want to, you'd want to treat. Yeah, absolutely. And, and so for those of you guys that are listening, uh, we do have a special link. Uh, so if you're watching this on video, it'd be right below. And, uh, if you're listening to this on, on podcast, we have got a link which actually gives you three free cartridges when you go ahead and you purchase the EnviroCleanse mobile air unit. So that way that will last you, what, three cartridges, right? We said six months, right? <laughs> Give you another year and a half, right? Before you have to yeah, get a new On top of the one that you already get. Yeah. So that, that's yeah, really yeah. Two, two years. Two years, yeah, exactly. So that's very helpful. You know, each, each one of those cartridges is $100. So a uh, so really good offer right there. Um, yeah, absolutely. And anyways, like I said, this is important. I know, um, in my old house, we had two of these units and then we moved into a new house and we were getting a lot of work done on the house and things like that. And we were just like, okay, we'll just get a bunch of these because there's just so much chemicals right now going on, even though we were using like low VOC paints and things right. like that. So I think we have like four or five of them in our house now and we can really tell a difference. Uh, it's definitely helped 
clean out, filter our air, our air quality. And I've got young kids. And so I was, my wife and I were real, real concerned about moving into the home with, um, you know, new furniture and things like that. And so, uh, so EnviroCleanse has really helped us out. So really appreciate all the hard work that you've put into that, Kyle. And uh, any last words of wisdom for our audience here? No, I, I, well, I guess my last words of wisdom would be, you know, when when you're making decisions on, on, you know, we can control a lot of different things that we put into our body. And obviously that's a key thing that, that you're able to, to, to talk to folks about is, but you know, we, it is hard for us to make decisions on the air we breathe. So let's, the things that we can impact, let's, let's make sure that we're, we're, doing the right things and, and, and addressing what we need to address there um, for that. That's not really a, a very wise, <laughs> this, you know, words of wisdom, but, but make sure that you know what you're, you're dealing with. And, and if you want to make a positive impact to something, a lot of times removing things is better than adding them, adding things in. Yeah. Very good guys. That's Kyle Knappenberger from, I said that right. Right. <laughs> Yes, from EnviroCleanse, so EnviroCleanse.com. We've got a special link for you. Um, One last thing I wanted to mention was very important too for mold. If you're concerned about having mold in your home, obviously a good good idea to get that tested and possibly remediated. But getting a filter like this in your home to help filter out mold spores um, will really bring down the toxic burden and uh, and really... um, allow you to help help you survive the mold because mold can be really, really hazardous. And there's about 25% of our population that struggles to detoxify it. And they, they end up with uh, very accentuated symptoms and it can literally be, you know, destructive, absolutely destructive to their life. So, um, so definitely a good thing to have on hand uh, because we're all susceptible to mold. We can all have water damage at any time. And for many people, they don't even know they've got mold in their home. And I find that as one of the root cause factors in a lot of people's chronic illness. So having good air purification, extremely important. So uh, take this seriously, guys. And, uh, you know, remember, you're more valuable than you think you are. So we'll see you guys on a future podcast. Be blessed.